Unbound is the world's biggest gravel race with the 200 mile distance serving as the marquee event for the Lifetime Grand Prix series but with 25, 50, 100 and 350 mile races also taking place Unbound gives us a look at some of the hottest, oddest and latest gravel tech and we had a feast of gravel goodies at this year's race including a new Shimano GRX group set and a new Canyon Grail not to mention the usual tyre choice conundrum, aero tweaks, custom hacks, storage solutions and more all of the images that you're about to see come from friend of bike radar Ben Delaney now Jack Loop once named him our gravel cowboy and he is rootin' tootin' in need of a rest now because he pulled a big shift to ride the 100 mile race and bring you these tasty golden nuggets of tech. We'll start with the biggest tech that we spotted, Shimano's long awaited 12 speed upgrade to its GRX gravel group set. With SRAM's Explore Gravel group sets having been 12 speed for a few years and Campagnolo's eCart group set offering 13 cogs to choose from, Shimano was lagging behind. It's therefore great to see Shimano finally updating GRX to move it in line with SRAM. But what are the key features of the new group set? Well, the bike that we photographed suggests that the 12 speed cassette uses Shimano's Microspline Freehub standard clearly differentiating it from Dura-Ace, Ultegra and Shimano's other road group sets. The pictured group set is mechanical and built around a 1045 tooth XTR M9100 cassette. Thus far we've only seen a 1x build but given Shimano's love of 2x we're not going to rule out the possibility of a front derailleur appearing at some point in the future. That cassette reveals another key feature of the new GRX group set. Firstly, it tells us that Shimano is increasing the capacity of its one byte GRX derailleurs, which currently stands at just 42 teeth. We can also see that the cassette uses a 10 tooth cog, which is a first for Shimano's gravel group set. That means that with a 10 to 45 tooth spread, Shimano's new GRX one by group set has a wider range than SRAM's Explore. We should mention, however, that riders seeking an even greater range also have the option of specking a mullet drivetrain with SRAM, with the possibility of running a monstrous 10 to 52 tooth dinner plate. The new 12 speed Shimano GRX rear derailleur is visually very similar to the existing Dior M6100 mountain bike rear derailleur. The overall shape is similar and, in keeping with Shimano's 12 speed mountain bike group sets, the 12 speed GRX does away with the B Link. There are other minor tweaks back here with a slightly redesigned cage and clutch lever. The brakes have also had a slight redesign with the bleed port moving to the outboard face, just like we see on Shimano's latest road calipers. The cranks pictured have barely changed, though there is now a 12 speed chainring attached to them. The shifters aesthetically are also incredibly similar to the old stuff, but the interesting bit comes when you consider what's going on inside them. Since the move to 10 speed, Shimano has used different cable pull ratios for its road and mountain bike group sets. That's incredibly frustrating. This has meant that it's not possible to create a so-called mullet setup with Shimano mechanical components. A mullet drivetrain pairs a drop bar shifter with a mountain bike rear derailleur, offering a huge gear range for a one by setup. Could Shimano GRX 12 speed use the same cable pull ratio as the brand's 12 speed mountain bike components, making a much dreamed about Shimano mullet drivetrain a possibility? And what about DI2? Is there a version coming or a two by setup? Well, we can't tell right now, but we can dream those sweet gravel dreams. But has Shimano done enough to make this your next gravel group set? Let us know in the comments. Road pro Tiffany Cromwell won the women's 100 mile event. Carolyn Schiff took the women's 200. Peter Stettiner was seventh in the men's 200. And Jasper Oaklin rounded out the 200 mile top 10. So it was a very good day for Canyon's unreleased gravel bike. 
Canyon has two gravel bikes in its range, the Burlia Grizzle and the Racia Grail, which hasn't really been properly updated since 2018. While Canyon is remaining tight-lipped, we reckon this is a new Grail, and there are plenty of new features to talk you through. The most noticeable change comes at the handlebar. Canyon looks to have dispensed with its signature double-decker bar on the new Grail. I'll leave you to judge whether that's a good thing or not. The bars have flat aero tops that require a bike computer mount to be screwed underneath. The tops then also bow down slightly to the flared drops. Another key change is that the brake cables are now internally rooted. They enter the frame through the top of the head tube with a special top bearing cover guiding the hoses down. Moving towards the back of the bike, the seat post also hints at a faster machine. The current Canyon Grail CF SLX incorporates a little suspension through the leaf spring seat post. The brand claims this flexes to provide 20 millimeters of travel. However, the new bike has a camtail seat post matching the D-shaped seat tube. This could be a sign that Canyon is further differentiating its two gravel bikes, making the Grail faster as the Grizzle becomes more geared towards intrepid bike packing. At the very back of the bike, the frame appears to use SRAM's universal derailleur hanger, meaning that you can run a mullet with a new direct mount mountain bike derailleur. However, this doesn't limit riders to SRAM's group sets. Peter Stettiner used Shimano's Dura Ace Di2 group set, showing that the frame is also compatible with 2x systems. The new bike also appears to boast some nifty down tube storage with what looks like a rubber cover opening to offer storage of essentials. New eyelets to attach frame bags are visible on the top and the underside of the top tube. There's also a mount point for a third bottle cage under the down tube at the bottom bracket. The new top tube also looks straighter than on the existing grail, which curves downwards to the head tube, and the fork appears to be a more angular affair. We'll just have to wait for the official launch of the bike to find out a bit more. If you're doing big distances at race pace, then you want to be efficient. That means aero is going to play a big part in your bike and clothing choices. Factors Ostro Gravel is the perfect example of this. Laurent de Crescenzo's bike features a special paint job just for this race, and the frame boasts numerous aero touches. The head tube has an hourglass shape, with the central section narrowing to smooth the airflow through the rest of the head tube. Deep tube shapes come straight from the Ostro Vam, factor's fastest road race bike, while a black ink bar helps the brake hoses to stay hidden. De Crescenzo's bike features a ceramic speed oversized pulley wheel system mounted to a SRAM red rear derailleur. The 1x48-tooth aero chainring is mounted to a SRAM red power meter crankset. Now finishing the bike is a set of black ink 34 wheels and lovely Rene Hurst tyres. Speaking of tyres, with the rain soaking parts of the course and rendering some mile long stretches absolutely challenging if not downright unridable, many riders had a tough time choosing their tyres for Unbound 2023. Some riders opted for skinnier tyres as they tend to bite down into the mud a little better. This also leaves more room between the tyre and the frame for clearing that mud. Now that might seem like an odd consideration to make, but the mud around Kansas can be like peanut butter. Once it builds up on the frame, it can easily stop your wheels from turning. Lachlan Morton chose a radical tyre setup. He paired a 44mm rear tyre with a massive 2.1 inch front tyre. Note also his wheel choices. A 60mm deep Vision Metron front wheel is likely to be there to eke out every possible aero saving. A lower rear wheel might have been chosen just for weight saving purposes. While there were muddy parts of the course, the overall theme was a fast race, so riders tended to stick to slick or semi-slick treads. Morton ran the Vittoria Terreno dry up front with a slightly more knobbly tyre on the rear. Ino Kente Zavalov, meanwhile, ran a full slick setup, simply sizing down for the mud. With a fair few specialised sponsored riders taken to the start, there was a good number of the company's Pathfinder tyres on display. 
Intermediate treads were also popular though, with the Maxxis Rambler a common sight. AG2R's Larry Warbass, meanwhile, was rocking a set of new Pirelli Cinturato RCX tyres. Interesting. Unbound takes place over the Flint Hills of Kansas and, well, the clue is in the name. Ride a bike through these lovely hills of Flint and you're almost guaranteed an enforced rest to fix a puncture. Doing this quickly is crucial in a race, so several riders opted to tape genuine innovations bacon strips to the front of their bikes, ready to plug a tubeless puncture should the need arise. Others have little Dynaplug canisters at the ready on their bike. Lachlan Morton has two bacon strips already in his plugging tools, ready for the fastest deployment. An F1 engineer would be happy with that. Torben Orsenblad, meanwhile, had his tubeless plug tool strapped to the seat post, which might seem like the muddiest place possible to mount a tool. That is, until you see Russell Finsterwald's effort. Do you think the mud-caked bacon strips, wrapped around those brake hoses by the way, provide additional puncture sealing powers? Answers in the comments, please. From our time nosing around the finish area, we can roughly conclude that as you do the longer events, you take more and more bags. Some of the racers in the shorter distances will get away with storing their essentials just in their jersey pockets. But once you get up to the 200 and 350 mile distances, you're likely to need a bag or two. Not that everyone got the memo. Lawrence Ten Dam and Larry Warbass were two riders in the elite 200 mile race that went without bags. The specialized diverge of Ten Dam does, however, feature frame storage under the front bottle cage. Lachlan Morton chose a slightly odd place to mount his one storage bag, tucking it in front of the seat post. The triangular tail fin bag, which isn't a design that is available yet, comes from the company's R&D department. The XL race sees the number and size of frame bags increase. XL racers also compete unassisted, meaning that they must carry all of their food and water or stop at stores on course. Kristen Legan packed a variety of food, including a lot of carbohydrate powder for liquid calories. And if you're going to ride through the night, as is the case with the XL 350 mile racers, you're going to need to take lights. This fork crown mounted front light is a very neat solution from Luke Hall. He also has a charging cable running from his Wahoo computer to a battery pack, which is probably a good thing to have if your ride is going to take over 24 hours. Ulrich Bartholms, meanwhile, he used a Supernova Airstream 2 front light mounted very neatly in line with the head tube. His BMC Caius featured a very nice build with rotor inspider power meter, SRAM GX Eagle access derailleur, complete with a Koval oversized pulley wheel cage and lightweight Fadfinder Evo disc wheels. An Apigura frame bag keeps storage inside the front triangle and we really, really like this build. While aero bars are banned in the elite fields of the hotly contested 200 mile event, everyone else was just free to choose whether or not to use time trial extensions. Using TT bars offers riders just another position, while also being faster on long, untechnical sections of the course. Inokenti Zavalov fitted a section of bar tape to the flat section of his handlebar. This allowed him to rest his forearms on the bar, mimicking TT bar armrests. Add in a super long Garmin Edge 1040 computer to hold on to, and you've got a makeshift aero bar setup. Away from the 200 mile race fields, Kristen Legan fitted a set of aero bars for the daunting 350 mile XL race. In these super long events, simply having another riding position to adopt can drastically improve comfort as well as significantly boosting aerodynamics. Her efforts paid off winning the Women's XL event with a healthy margin of just two hours. With muddy sections of the course, riders also had to pay attention to chain retention. With the super sticky mud building up on the chain, it can be easy to find it unshipping from a one by chain ring. With that in mind, some riders chose to use a chain retention device. Rob Britton had a K-Edge model, keeping his chain on the massive 50-tooth chainring. 
he uses a classified two-speed rear hub, giving him an effective 34-tooth chainring should he need it. Seventh on the day, Russell Finsterwald also went for a K-Edge device to keep the chain on, but others decided that the clutch to Aurelia would do just fine. Jeffrey Langat was one such rider. He finished the 350 mile event in just over 25 and a half hours, but many XL riders were forced to abandon after hours of walking in the mud. Back to Lachlan Morton's bike and the mismatched tyres weren't the only strange modification. His Shimano XTR pedals have had one side of the retention system removed. Quite why and whether this was done by a mechanic or the muddy conditions is unclear. Was this a pre-race hack to improve mud clearance? Who knows? But it was certainly a brave decision from a few riders to use road pedals. Mud really doesn't clear well from them. It was also unclear for a time as to why Kim Eng Ki had a spoon dangling from a storage bag. Now, she said that it was for mud clearing purposes, but we reckon that she waved it at riders and shouted, eat my dirt before uh, just dropping them. Finally, an increasing number of road pros are turning to the dark side with a stab at gravel racing. That includes retired World Tour pros such as Lawrence Ten Dam, who rode this rather trick specialised Diverge STR. One rider who's very much not retired is AG2R Citroen's Larry Warbass, who threw himself in at the deep end by making Unbound 200 his first ever gravel race. Oh, and he's just ridden the Giro too. Fresh from a Grand Tour, Warbass rode his BMC Caius for the first time the day before the 200 mud caked miles. Keeping this a full roadie setup, Warbass's Caius had a narrow 36 cm bar, as well as those road pedals I mentioned earlier. His verdict at the finish? You couldn't pay me enough to do gravel racing every day. Now it's just time for the riders to clean their bikes and consume a few thousand calories. Now if you like this video, then you'll love our Paris-Roubaix tech video. There's a link just up there. But before you go and watch that, remember to like this video and subscribe to see more from us. See you next time.